Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 76 of Lightroom Quick Tips. Lately, for some reason, I've been receiving a lot of emails from folks that are really confused about the import dialog in Lightroom. So I thought I'd do this quick tips video, and we're just going to take a look at the import dialog in Lightroom, and I'll try to explain the various functions contained in that dialog. Now, you probably know that if you're in the library of Lightroom, down here in the lower left hand corner you have a button import that's where you could import your images you also could go up to file then down to import photos and video and when you do that this import dialog will appear now the first question i get and believe it or not i get this question a lot people are saying that their import dialog doesn't look anything like my import dialog well if you go down here in the lower left hand corner you'll see there's a button if we click on that button you could see that we get kind of a minimized version of the import dialog. A lot of people are getting this. And of course, it looks totally different than what I typically will use. A lot of people, I guess, like using this. Personally, I like to get as much information as possible, where my images are, where they're coming from, what I'm going to do the, to them as I import them, and where they're going. So I prefer the more maximized version of the import dialog. So if you're getting this and you want to see the other import dialog, you go back to this little button in the lower left-hand corner of the dialog. You just click on that, and you'll get this more maximized version of the dialog. The other issue that people email me about is they'll say they know they have images on their memory card and the memory card is plugged in and displaying, but no images are displaying. Well, if you go over here to the right hand panel, you'll see that there's a checkbox. Don't import suspected duplicates. If you check that box or uncheck that box, you'll see some images appear. For some reason, Lightroom thinks you imported your images already. Maybe you did, and you just want to import them again to a different folder or something like that, which some people do. Well, if that's the case, you'll have to uncheck this box. Alternatively, alternatively, instead of doing that, you may want to go up here to where it says All Photos. And when you click All Photos, you'll get every image that is on that card, whether it was imported or not. But the if this checkbox is checked, the ones that were already imported will be grayed out and you won't be able to import those again unless you uncheck that box. Then you could import those again. By default, Lightroom has new photos clicked there and it has don't import suspected duty, um, dupl duplicates uh, checked. So by default, this is probably what's happening to you. So you either could see what's there by clicking there or by clicking there. Now those are the two main issues I, uh, I see from people emailing me. Other than that, let's just take a quick look around. Over here on the left-hand panel, this is our source. This is where we're getting our images from. And there's a little drop-down here. You could do it this way. You could just go down to a direct folder, recent folder, or to different areas on your computer. In this case, I do have an SD card plugged into the computer from my Nikon D800e. So that's showing up as a device, devices. If you had a camera plugged directly in, if I had the Nikon D800e di plugged directly into the computer, that would show just like it is now. So we're seeing that SD card. And that's by default, or at least Lightroom is thinking that's where I want to get the images from. So it's showing me that right away. As soon as I open this dialog, it's showing me the images. Now, if for some reason the images are somewhere else you could just search for them we have our external hard drives here media server morganti drive and lightroom we have the internal drive that's the Mac macintosh hd right there that's the drive that's inside of my imac down here is that same sd card that's up here it's just listed here nothing you know different about that that's the same exact card but if i have images let's say on the morganti drive i could click on the expose triangles and then drill down to any of these images that we think are on here somewhere and, and get them through that method of just drilling down to where they are. So that's this left-hand panel. Now going across the top, we have copy as DNG, copy, move, and add. A lot of people like to copy their images and convert them to a DNG file. A DNG file stands for digital negative, and that is Adobe's version of a RAW file. And a lot of people like to use it. There are some advantages to using a DNG file. They tend to be smaller than the original RAW file. So 
these humongous D800E RAW files, if I did convert them to DNG, they'll very likely be a little bit smaller and you'll save some disk space. The other thing though with DNGs are that you got to remember is if there's any proprietary information from your camera that gets written to their RAW file, it might get lost during the conversion. For example, Nikon has a thing called Active D Lighting. That is their technology. It is, is um, something that you might have turned on on your Nikon camera. And if you use it, when you convert to DNG, that won't get converted. It won't come over. It will get lost in the conversion. So, so any proprietary functionality that your camera might have might not make it to the DNG. So re keep that in mind. The other thing about DNGs are that are a little different than the regular or the you know the actual raw files from the manufacturers is when you do edits if i was editing a nikon raw file the way i have my lightroom set up my edits get stored in the lightroom catalog and into a sidecar file called an xmp file that's the way i have my lightroom set up and we have covered this i think in the last episode episode 75 i talked about this the thing with a DNG file, you don't create those sidecar files. The edits will get written directly to the DNG file. Now, the disadvantage of that is every time you write to a file, you stand the chance of corrupting it. Now, I know that is rare, but it does happen. Typically, if you're reading from a file, you'll never corrupt it. You're only reading the data that is there. But if you're writing to the file, you always stand the chance of corrupting the file. With the Nikon, Fuji, whatever, Pentax, Sony file, you're never writing to the file any of your edits. You're writing those edits to the, to the catalog and or to the XMP file. You're never writing them directly to that raw file. The DNG, you're actually writing to the raw file. The advantage of that is you're not, you don't have as many files, so you don't have all those XMP files laying around. But the disadvantage, again, you stand the chance of corrupting the file. The other advantage of DNG files, because they're smaller, they tend to load faster. At least that is what is claimed. I've never seen a difference, but if you're using nowadays a really fast computer, you probably won't see the performance difference that the DNG uh, file supposedly affords. But it's really up to you. If you're using DNG files and you like it, I say keep using them. There's no reason why you shouldn't. The chances of corrupting the file is slim, although it is there. On the other hand, if you're like me and you don't convert to DNG and you don't feel like it, then don't. I don't. I don't see, see a need in my case. So um, I just use the original files no matter what camera system I'm using. All right. Now, in that case, I'll use copy. So I'm just copying the file as it is. Um, it even could be a JPEG if it happens to have a J I shot a JPEG for some reason. Um, and I'll just copy it as is. And that's what I do there. Move and add are grayed out because I can't do that from an external um, SD card or an, uh, you know, an SD card is, itself. But if I was copying images from one of my external drives or from the actual hard drive that's in the computer, I could actually move them. So if the file was on, let's say, the Morganti drive, I could move it from there. It'll take it off that drive and put it wherever my destination folder is. Add means it just stays right at where it is. If it's the Morganti drive, it'll stay right there. It just adds it to the Lightroom uh, library and catalog, but it will stay wherever it's located. And so you could do those if you so choose. Now down below, we touched on this. This is all photos, new photos, destination folders. It will actually just kind of sort the images by the destination folders that you're sending them to or group them. You can see a little... Um, tool tip they call that a helper tip comes up group photos by destination folders i don't know anyone that actually uses that but i'm sure people do now we go over to the right panel and we have file handling first of all previews i bid, build minimal previews it helps lightroom run faster but sometimes people like to do a little more than that you could do embedded and sidecar previews now embedded means if i'm using my nikon raw files it will embed a preview directly into the catalog, but also embed a preview into a sidecar file in the XMP file. If I'm doing DNGs, it will embed the preview right into the DNG. So keep that, you know, 
makes the DNG bigger then. Yeah. Or you can just build standard previews, which are a little bigger, or one-to-one -one previews, which are considerably bigger. Again, this will take up more disk space and or possibly make Lightroom be a little sluggish if you make your previews too robust or too big. You can build smart previews. We've talked about that in past episodes. If you have your Lightroom images kept on an external hard drive, when you import them, you could build smart images during the import or smart previews during the import. And that will allow you to be able to edit them when your hard drive is not plugged into the computer. Personally, I don't really use smart previews, but a lot of people do, so you could check that box. Again, we talked about don't import suspected duplicates. Now, some people like to make a second copy. Uh, so they're copying their images to the, where they keep their Lightroom images, their, from their SD card, let's say, to their folder where they keep all their uh, Lightroom images. But they like to archive them, too, to another external hard drive, let's say. And you could do that here. You could click that box, and then you could pick where you want to send them. That's if you want to do that. You could add them to a collection as you go. So you just went to Hawaii and you're making a collection of images called Hawaii. Click that box and you could you know, create a new collection or add it to one that's already existing. Now file renaming, you could rename the files when you import them. Personally, I don't, I just leave them as they are. Uh, but a lot of people do, they like to name them maybe where they were. So if you went to Hawaii, you do a custom setting, custom text, call it Hawaii, and then it will increment each image by number so it would be high hawaii-1 hawaii-2 and things like that you could change the extension typically you're going to leave it as is but you know whatever it was on your sd card or you can make the extension all uppercase or all lowercase i mean really i don't know the advantage either of that and typically i don't do any file renaming myself but a lot of people do now, during the import, you could apply a preset to it. Hopefully, you're using Anthony Morganti's Lightroom presets. And if you are, you could apply a preset to every image you import. I typically don't apply any presets when I import the image, but I do apply a metadata preset that I call import preset. And all that is, is all my copyright info. So every image as it's imported gets all my copyright info added to the metadata right away. You could uh, do keywords as you're importing, and I do this uh, quite often. So if you're in Hawaii and you have all your Hawaii images, you could put Hawaii, you could put islands, you could put tropical, you could put all these different keywords, and those will get added to the metadata during your import. Now, destination, where are you gonna send these images? Below this, we have all the different hard drives that are plugged into your computer. The internal Macintosh drive, the media server drive, which I have plugged on here, the Morganti drive, and Lightroom. I keep my images on my Lightroom drive. And what you would do is you would just click this little triangle if it's not already open. That's the expose triangle. And when you do that, then you could go down to the folder, the parent folder that contains all your Lightroom images. And you could pick it. Now, these are cats. This is a couple of my wife's cats. So I could click on, I have a cats folder. And then I want it into a subfolder, and I sort it by date. So I have it the year first, because that helps sort it properly. 2016, and it happens to be today, January 24th. I just actually took a few pictures of a cat, of the cat, so I had something to show you, as you know, for this uh, video. So there, and then you could see I already imported them. So that's cats in that. So whatever, that's you know, this is totally up to you how you sort and and you know put your images in your Lightroom library. I like to have it by uh, where it is. Let's say Allegheny State Park and the date I was at Allegheny State Park, stuff like that. So you could do all that. Now below all this is just my SD card that happens to be plugged in the computer. Obviously, I'm not going to copy them on top of themselves, so that's not applicable. So that's this right panel. Now, along the bottom, we could just change the size of our thumbnails with this slider here. We could sort them by capture time, checked state, meaning, let's say I uncheck this one it gets put to the rear. So we have it sorted by check state. So any that are not checked go towards the bottom, let's say. Um, file name or media type. Um, we have raw files, we have JPEGs, or we might have a movie, and those could get sorted by that, or we just have it off. So they're just, the way they are on the card is the way they're showing up here. Um, so, 
or capture time. So whatever, whatever you like is the sort down here. Now you could uncheck all of them or check all of them. You could look at a single one or look at all of them. And that's that. That is really just the import dialog um, in Lightroom. It's as simple as that. Hopefully that clears up any problems or questions anyone has with the import dialog. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I really truly do. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys soon.